table of theory in Giardini. The guest today is Cadore Attia. His artwork is in Arsenale. Um, I think um, most of you have already seen it. Uh, I saw some faces before at uh, your, your room. Um, I think you can introduce your artwork if you like to, to uh, that you choose and you expressly made for the Biennale for this year edition. Yeah. It would be good. Well, I mean, the work I'm presenting here at the Biennale has, uh, let's say, three parts. One gather the whole corpus, I mean, let's say 10% of the researches I have done on this project, which is uh, about the power uh, of the voice, of the human voice. The second part is an installation which display uh, 10 uh, archive films I will, I will speak more about later, and um, uh, connected each one to a cylinder on top of which I, sp I, sp I spread a couscous. I could have put salt, or, but couscous react much better. And then the third part, which is very important, is a film that I did about uh, from a, a book of poems mm -hmm. that I read for probably the last uh, 20 years by this Moroccan poetess, Rashida Madani, mm -hmm. who's basically a feminist, uh, a feminist with a veil, which for me, as, as a non-follower of any religion, I found relevant to, to work with, also because she was a communist in the 70s and she, she, she's a strong character. In any case, the, the project is about the voice and these, uh, I would say, um, m m and it's, it's metaphysic. Uh, there is something that is absolutely incredible with, the, with sound is that um, we all believe that sound is actually created by the molecule of, of air that are moving, like now I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a microphone, but if you remove this, uh, the, the air that is pushed by the electromagnetic waves that, w that my, my vocal uh, cords produce uh, arrive in your ears and your body as well, and you feel these vibrations. But actually, at the end of the 19th century, no, of the, of the 18th century, in Germany, there was a, a, a physicist and composer whose name was Ernst Kladny, and he discovered that the sound can be produced. I mean, actually, sound do not only uh, circulate within air, but within solid as well. This is very important to understand the project. It means that when I'm doing this, what you hear is not this. It's actually, I mean, what you feel has a vibrations it's not a vibration, it's sound. Sound is vibration. If, uh, so Ernst Kladny did, uh, during 10 years, an equation in which he, he, he explained that solids as well can, can, amplif can, can, can trans transmit sound. Transmit. So he did his, his demonstration at, at the end of this equation with a plate of copper like this, mm -hmm. on which he put salt. The plate of copper was, uh, the instrument is still the same until today, was put on the top of a, of a wooden stick, like this, on the table. And uh, then he put, his, he put salt, and perpendicularly to the plate, he used a, a, a violin balls. <whistles> then he produced a nice. sound. So what Ernst Kladny discovers is that certain frequencies of sound, not all of them, when they are connected to a very sensitive solid, they produce one single pattern. He spent all his life uh, observing these patterns, and until today we know thousands of these patterns called the Kladni patterns. Mm -hmm. What is extremely inter interesting and important is to understand that if you take uh, 650 hertz, which is, <whistles> you have a, a pattern, but if you take, I don't know, 13,380 hertz, you have another pattern more complex. There, are, there were two things that fascinate me in this experience. The first thing is that it's beautiful. 
It's definitely an abstract drawing coming out of nowhere. But more, more interesting, all the patterns that he has discovered exist already in nature. Like a geometrical... Uh yeah. For instance, the Tortuga have on their back Cladney pattern. The cheetahs, leopard, they have pat Cladney pattern on their skin. Flowers have Cladney pattern. Leaves have Cladney patterns. Uh, stones have Cladney patterns. Cladney patterns existed and exist forever. It was just a matter to unveil them. Yeah. And these, these lead us to something that, that I, 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 as I told you, has a known follower of any religion, but I do trust in something. In, 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 an, in, in an energy, in, in something, you know? And I cross this discovery with the most, let's say, contemporary theory in quantum physics which defines the universe, which is called the three, the, there are three names. The, the, the string theory, la théorie des cordes, or the ring the theory, or the brand theory. For all of them, uh, the agreement between the scientists today, the quantum scientists, is that smaller than everything, than the quark, than the lepton, than the graviton, the smallest particle ever, is, is energy. Is, is, is a ring of energy, is a string of energy, or is a brand of energy. And I found extremely fascinating that uh, this guy, isolated in his countryside of Germany, at the end of the 18th century, theorizing in equations, have discovered, have discovered that what we are now understanding a little bit more today, that the universe is, the universe is vibration. We are all, everything is vibration. And what, what is extremely interesting is, this, is the fact that, as an artist, when you get into the crossing point of scientist, uh, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, statement and, uh, and rational, I mean mind, working with irrational, non-rational, uh, 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 things that I called poetry, because Cladny was also a musician, was also a composer, and there is this dimension in human mind, uh, 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 I think power also, contrary to machine, yeah. is, is, is this flexibility between reason, ration, rationality, and the, un the unpredictability the materiality, the non-knowledgeness, what Jacques Lacan used to call the non le, le, le non savoir. I think this is extremely important because then from this, this uh, uh, observation, I started to rethink the, the whole uh, uh, relation we have with music and how does it start in our life. It always starts with the voice of our mother, always, before the instru instrument. Of course, this is a natural instrument. Yeah. We did always start with, it, with when we are in the belly with the voice of the of the mother. So I started to 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 re to re listen uh, music that have been, I mean, um, part of my uh, childhood, especially those great Arab singers, Jews, Muslims. When in this time uh, mu Arab music was Judeo-Arab, definitely, mm -hmm. like Simon Tamar. Uh, Renet Lohanes, but also Um Kelsum, Warda Jazeria, Noura, especially in Algeria and Morocco. And I discovered that in the US, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the, in the 50s, there was a school, a very famous school of, of, of cybernetic and, 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 uh, and, and, and anthropology and psychoanalyst called the behaviorist. And they, some of the behaviorists used to use the songs of Um Kelsum to cool down schizophrenic, schizophrenic people. So, I've been very interested by this sort of uh, uh, way to make visible what is extremely difficult to explain because it doesn't exist materially, which is sound. So the, the discovery of Ernst Kladny for me was uh, challenging in the sense that, of course, each uh, sound, there are thousands of sounds, produce uh, patterns. But how to connect this experience to a voice that is singing? For this, I'm, I went to, uh, to talk with uh, engineers in Paris uh, at IRCAM, Institut de Recherche de Création Musicale, which is like, uh, it's one of the highest institutes in the world for, uh, for music uh, researchers, but, I, but very sensitive to artists because they are close to Pompidou. Yes, it's you know, just, just in front, front. made of by... And then I explained to them that I, I wanted to, to connect the voice of these, of these pure singers who were all dead. They have all disappeared. They have all 
uh, passed away in the, uh, for the latest in the 80s. There's only one singer in the, in the works, by the way, who is Paritza, the, Ira the, the, the Iranian singer, who is still alive. She's very old. They immediately told me it's impossible. It's impossible to connect. Um, the, yeah, you can start to hit. Huh? Uh, yes. It, it, <laughs> don't be shy. I, I'm here to entertain you. So. Um, but you have I've to it. Yeah, but I will. I do. Don't you. worry. <laughs> I don't. I never do. You know, the the voice is this. The, the voice is this it's incredible yeah. instrument that it can produce art and also can feed you. Yeah. So uh, th this is this is also another topic that we we should talk. But please, bon appetit. Um, <laughs> What I found interesting with these scientists in Paris is that they told me it's impossible to, 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 make, to make moving these patterns because platinum patterns work on certain frequencies. But if you want to create moving, uh, I mean, drawing on a plate with couscous or salt, uh, you, will have, I mean, you will have to set up a software with an un 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 something, a sound you cannot stand. Yeah like very acute. Yeah. So I start to source on the internet famous live concert by these uh, iconic women singers to find the moment where they kept a note or where the voice was, the, sp the spectrum of the voice was ex eno uh, uh, enough interesting to get closer to this. So that between two frequencies we could arrange the, the, the difference uh, to have to have the, 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 the shift between one pattern to another one has a movement. And it worked. It's two years of work, but it worked. So this is this is let's say I just spoke about the two part the two first part of the of the of the installation. The re the corpus of the researchers mm -hmm. and the couscous uh, sound sculptures. Then on the third part thank you Itami on, on the third part you have a film which is extremely important in, in terms of what means the voice, what is this incredible human natural instrument, human organs, that, ca that can produce emotion with, thank you, with, um, with sound, with form, basically with melody, but also with meanings. And this is all about what, what poetry is all about, producing emotion with meanings, another metaphysic. Why we can be extremely touched by a poem, by an haiku, or by something like this? Why? Uh, why? Why? And as well, we can be uh, touched by a sound, a, a melody of a voice. So this ambivalent is definitely what what I, I put at the center of the. I mean, at the center intellectually of my project to just release the, this incredible uh, um, power of the voice. Thank you. Yes, uh, even because we were think talking about the the great importance of the voice so of the last part of your, of your work too, because it is not the same just to read the subtitles with the poems written on, on the film. Yeah. It is really touching if you hear the, the three women uh, to, uh, yes, l uh, reading the poem. It yeah. is co completely different. Of course. The, 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 the film is, call, is called the Prosody, Prosody. and is actually a uh, Three women played in this film. They are they are all reading the poems of the of the Rashid. poetess Rashida Madani, who is at the she's at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But she has a way to read a poem uh, in a very lyrical way. I would say she she reads perfectly her poems. Then you have this Algerian singer, uh, sorry, actress, who is 70 years old. She has a very low voice, probably for because of many years of uh, party, smoking, drinking. And she's also a character. She's a very yes. strong character. Biguna, she's, she's extremely famous in Algeria. She's the incarnation of uh, also a woman who has uh, uh, always uh, uh, lived her life against the, 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 the machism system of this Arabic uh, society. So the fact that I invite her to read the poems for me was not only the feminist act, but also to, 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 to actually illustrate what in the first corridor, one of the musicologists, yeah. transgender, she's yes. saying, she says that the voice, she says that when I have a, this is a parenthesis, but very important, when I'm asking her how she was living with her voice as a transgender, mm -hmm. male to female, and she said, you know, I have friends who are, so you can imagine that she's yeah. talking about transgenders, and I, I'm, I play them, I play for them uh, Turkish singers, 
she said biologically feminine yeah who said, has a very low voice, low voice. Yes, so voice. that they understand that to have a low voice or high voice is not a question of gender because this is also another cliche of the society of the society there are women who have a, a low voice yes, so the, the reason I took uh, Biuna is that she has a very uh, a strong voice. Yeah, and, and it takes a, a, a while to understand if she's really a woman <laughs> or she's a transgender too. Exactly. Because it's so, yes, so deep and so low, the, the, her voice, that Absolutely. It, 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 it keeps you a bit, yes, thinking about the... In, you know, it's very interesting what you say, yeah. because in Algeria, she, you have no idea how much she's popular in Algeria. She's a star in Algeria. When she's arriving in the airport, yeah. it's like, but many people think she's a uh, man. Many, many people, men and women, think she's a man. She called her, some people like to joking, ah, the, trans the, the transvestite. She's a woman. But then in the film, the third person, this red hair, she's a transgender. She's an Algerian. She used to be a man until uh, the end of the 70s and she became a woman and you you see in a way to read the, to read the poems that she's trying hard yeah. to make it feminine yeah. and that's why the the film as you said is very important that you hear and that's why i put headphones in this installation so that you really can focus on the on the sound of the voice yes. because you know i think poetry is is definitely a, 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 a an, exper uh, an, 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 um, an acoustic experience of very an, an acoustic yeah. experience exactly and by the way because we talk about experience and acoustic plays with also I auditory pheno uh, psychological auditory phenomenon because when someone is reading a poem it's not the same thing that if you read it okay. or also if you listen someone reading a po poem in a language that you don't understand you can feel things Yes, you can feel the musicality of the poem of course, you, better you. than maybe something that you really understand. Ex exa exactly. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't speak Japanese, I don't speak Hebrew, I don't speak Chinese, but if I listen uh, uh, a poem uh, in Hebrew, I can, uh, my attention will be different. Yeah. And, and at that point, I think poetry uh, it has its, its place in this work. That's why I put this film on this, uh, on this uh, side by side with these vibrations or something. Do you have a question? Well, can, can, you, can you use the microphone, please? Thank you. It works. I was just going to say, do you think it's really like, let's expound upon what that the musicality is. Like, what is it that we're connecting to and we're feeling when we interpret uh, a poem from another language? Do you think that there is something that can we begin to define this sort of energetic uh, output in material terms, uh, or sort of thinking of it abstractly in that way? No? I, I think so. I, I, think, um, I think it's even more interesting to listen a poem by someone from whom you, you don't get the language. Because it opens you to what I call the unknown field of so emotion. It's like, I mean, in the surrealism, this uh, André Breton and um, uh, Anton Arto have experimented drugs too for that, peyotel. Mm -hmm. I think what is incredible, or let's be much before, Charles Baudelaire used to experiment hashish. He was part of the club of the hashishin. I think, in, I think poetry is drug. I think po poetry uh, is drug in the sense that it's, it's a psychotrope, I mean. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process of creation that really um, open the window to, to, to another world where you, l you lose the contact, you lose the... And, and, this, and this is very close to music, very close to music. Because, but, but then subtly to art as well, to painting also, I think. I mean, I think this is one of the interesting thing, components about music and, and the visual arts is that with one chord or sound, a musician can compose an emotion to be delivered to an entire room of individuals, where as if you're working in visual art, your aim is to also compose, compose a complex feeling or communication, but deliver it through visual means. So I think mm. there's always this sort of, I think, you know, working in visual art, you're envious of this ability of the musician to like instantaneously, instantaneously access everyone. Is there, is yeah. there like in the work you're doing, are you trying to also connect to that instantaneousness in a way that like 
you trying to access that or maybe just fuse the two? I'm very sensitive to what you just described, and for many years, it's not new, it's like when I was young, I had my best friend was a pianist, and I remember that he used to tell me, you know, Kader, you cannot close your ears, you can not close your eyes, when you can't stand something, so this is very important, but, but, but I have to say that uh, with the experience, I discovered that uh, it's just that sound and visual doesn't work the same. Uh, I think uh, visually the mind kind has been um, uh, able to evaluate by observing mm -hmm. what many theory today like mi uh, neuron mirrors and all that things uh, are explained. I mean the, 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 the French philosopher that I really like, René Girard, has explained this very much, the, the mimesis, you know. Mm -hmm. with, with sound is not the same. I think in sound, and, and then just to finish with the visual, I think the visual works uh, symbolically. But not the sound. I think the sound really let go deep just because materially, sound makes you vibrating. Your body, yeah, yeah. Y your body becomes the, 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 how do you call, how the, the resonation. Yeah. Uh. I don't know if you heard in the, this, uh, I discovered this, I was talking about this recently in, in um, I think in Alaska or Inuit, Inuit peoples uh, have, uh, some of them have a ritual of, of polyphony is amazing. They are actually song all uh, uh, they sing all together in the mouth of one who is opening his mouth, and all the woman comes to sound in, in his mouth so that the woman becomes the, the, the resonator and wow. then to heal her. It's a healing process. It's a healing process. Wow. And I think I think these what I have observed with these Inuit, what in the film in the corridor, the, the ethnologist uh, I'm sorry, uh, I worked with Moya Malamusi from Malawi. The instrument he's talking about and he's playing, you know, the Nkanga, the Nkangala, makes that your own body become the resonator. And then it is used in Malawi as an antidepressor by most of the time by women who feel not very not well and they can play this 24 hours, I mean during days, just to cool down. So it's not a process that works in 20 minutes. I mean, you really have to play long. But if you have something like this, the stick is like that and you play, you had become the resonator. So for sure, you had, after 24 hours, it's start to vibrate. It's opening your vascular system as well, so maybe increasing blood flow and has all of these physiological uh, effects to it is at the same time that, is that, that we maybe that don't have yeah. completely studied yet or understand. Yeah, I mean, th th this for sure. Yeah. But I think, I think this is very interesting because uh, I've also experimented this, that when you put hair plugs to, to sleep, you still hear by this, by all your body. But even at the Ilkam, if you go in the, the, the room of silence, uh, you give up hearing all the, the of course, the, the, <coughs> the sounds of the external, external by, of, from the room, but you start hearing the sounds inside you. Exactly, exactly, which is also very important. Very important and, yeah. and very impressive because yeah. you can really hear the, 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 your heart. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm, yeah. And your 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 breath. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's quite impressive. I, I I've been in Paris and uh, I I experimented it and it's mm. like ah. <laughs> yeah. It's very impressive um, to hear from the inside yourself from the inside. It's hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's very impressive and. Uh, so you, you can't of, uh, really you can't give up hearing something. No. Listen to something. No, no. But it's interesting <laughs> to, to see that, to feel that depression, for instance, is also a sound phenomenon. Yeah. And the fact that these Inuit people heal someone by singing in, in her mouth, all together, them first one person and then the whole community. Or this example of the people from Malawi using the Nkangala, mm. I, which is a stick. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's also interesting because it is actually an instrument that you play for yourself, not for the others. You hear something, you hear, in the video you can hear something, yeah. but inside you hear perfectly. perfectly. Wow. So this is also a self-treatment, self-therapy, in terms of, uh, we, which makes that, I, I'm, I've always been fascinated by traditional processes of healings, mm -hmm. and I have to say that this is extremely int uh, uh, int uh, relevant and interesting because it's not using digital and technology, it's just a process that I'm taking care of. The, again, the fact that we have, made of vibrations in the end. Uh, 
it's interesting speaking to you in the microphone sitting next to you, Kadir. <laughs> Um, going back a little bit to the relationship between the, as you mentioned, the visual art and um, sound, the music. I, I was thinking that the degree of abstraction between the relationship between what is visual versus what is oral. And my idea was that a visual art has more clue, more something more for you to hang on to because you can see it. And it stays there as long as you stare at it. Whereas musing is fleeting. If you miss it, it's gone. Um, and I wonder how you, and it's all about the power of art and the power of artistic intervention is to give a form to something that doesn't exist uh, in a concrete, tangible form. The sound and what is visual alike but to a different degree, and to, to a different degree of abstraction that uh, you have to negotiate and then you have to arrange and then manage to make it accessible. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I wonder how you this time dealt with the idea of sound, knowing your work in the past, that, and uh, you said you've been interested in, this has been your interest in dealing with sound and in a voice, a human voice. But um, how did you, in general, I was thinking about the issue of abstraction, that uh, our intolerance to abstraction and, it, and, it, and how in fact our, our media information environment is so much focused on something is concrete and having direct um, strong impact. So this is complete opposite. And I wonder if this has been some of your consciousness in, in, in making art and, and the reason why you were drawn to the sound as your material. Um, I think that uh, le leading to abstractions, um, especially today in 2017, is uh, is definitely um, something that try to take care of this uh, um, this fear that the whole society has with the unknownness. The, that fear nowadays, today, mm -hmm. that fear is, for instance, the disappearance of the object, the fact that we are living in a society where the digitalization of everything makes that this concreteness is like dissolving. I'm talking philosophically, yeah, in 300 absolutely. years, this many things will have disappeared. So I think there's a subconscious fear in the mankind nowadays with this uh, shift that we are living, and we are the, t the witnesses of that. So, of course, when uh, Kandinsky and Mondrian have created the, 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 the magazine uh, uh, Zero, uh, Roncare, Roncare, mm -hmm. which was the first review of abstractions, to be abstract artist in the 30s was also extremely radical, and most of them were put in this Antarctic Kunst by the Nazi, you know? Yeah. To, be, to be an abstract painter well, today, it's another story. But I do think that, the, the in, in, my, in, in my opinion, I mean, the, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's not abstract, or maybe, or maybe. So, I, yeah, I think it's interesting because it, it reminds me, <laughs> it reminds me of Arte Povera works. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting. <laughs> so, Daniel Spoeri, you know. <laughs> so, no, I mean, uh, I'm going to try to continue, but I think, I think what is important is that, and I, this is also interesting in terms of how much I do care about this shift between the disappearance of the concrete and in which we are all... I uh, 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 I mean, sort of, we are swirling down, you know, we are like uh, uh, going down without any, uh, like Sisyphus, without any way of resisting. And the, and the very concrete uh, aspect of, 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 of life forever. So I did not lead to this abstract aspect of the work uh, as a sort of uh, uh, decision that I have elaborated during years and 
and applying my thoughts philosophically to into an artwork mm. is just that as an artist, most of the time, you just, I would say, in the end, you just the prism f through which uh, datas go through. Yeah. And sometimes when they go out, they go out like the, like the prism with different ra rays, colors, and sometimes just one ray. I think this work has gathered probably not, I would not say uh, um, an interest for this sort of abstraction, but definitely, definitely um, the importance of immateriality that is uh, before and, and beyond us and will always be. I think when I was talking about the discovery of uh, Ernst Kladny mm -hmm. at the end of the 18th century, again, what fascinates me is that he has discovered something that already yet Exist. existed. It is exactly like um, a video work I, 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 I did during many years of animals uh, doing camouflage. If you take the bird of Papua New Guinea called the Lyra bird, this bird is, yeah. is repeating the sound of the machine that has destroyed its environment. But he is able to do that since probably 500,000 years. It's just now that the machine, the sewer machine, exists for, let's say, 80 years. If you take this squid that is incredibly uh, uh, talentuous in camouflage, I forgot the name of the species. The, 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 squid, the squid can reproduce exactly what I have on my, on my, on my table, this white square with red liquid and uh, this brown. And by transforming its, 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 uh, by transforming its, uh, its skin, and I, 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 I think, can I have another plate, please? I think this is, um, I, I think this is definitely what is, what is, what is in important. Um, talking about the critique of the, what the mankind has, uh, has brought, has also denied, has also denied, I would say, yes. in the world. When we talk about the Anthropocene, for instance, we most of the time say that the mankind has transformed Earth since the 40s since the use of atomic bomb. Yeah. It is not true. It has, it, it has started definitely first when it, ha when it has invented agriculture and most problematic, the Industrial Revolution. Absolutely. This is what Alfred Russel Wallace and Charles Darwin have, yeah. I mean, especially Wallace, have won uh, us uh, in, at the end of the 19th century. So wha what interests me when I'm dealing with, um, with, uh, with, with uh, to answer your question, even not really answering, but co continuing this, 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 this explanation of how I do think and how to create, using traditional material like couscous, organic one, foods, uh, sugar, or, and, 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 and reenacting them, activating them with um, uh, high technology process, which is this uh, vibrator connected to, the vo connected to a computer that is transforming the voice into sinus that makes this plate vibrating and then create, recreating the, the Kladni pattern. It's for me a way to probably, without giving him tribute, um, saying to the, to, to, to the people who, with whom I can share this that we have never been modern. In, in, in to quote on, um, Bruno Latour theory, we have never been modern. In this, in the, thank you so much. In the sense that tradition, the rupture between tradition and modernity, um, has never existed. This is, this is an invention of, it's not an invention, but it is, yeah, this is a religion of the modernity. Yeah. yeah, the fact that, no, since the, the, the rise of the age of the reason, we, 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 the, one of the main goal of, 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 of uh, an agency of, 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 of the mankind would be superiority, yeah. which is not. So the, the, the use of abstractions, uh, for me, it's not absolutely not versus uh, concrete. It's much more this sort of, it, 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 it's, it, it's this poetical uh, process to open a window, not on the Pandora box, but on something we don't know actually. Maybe it's bad, huh? maybe it's good. But Kader, I also think that there's a seemingly, seeming contradiction between the hard data, the, 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 the field of science and physics and all these very specialized field can, can prove about the way the universe is, 
um, and, and, it, and it, but, but there's another layer of power of visual art that can bring it to accessible to that fact. So there's a, there's a contradiction between that, what was proven scientifically as a data and all these, um, as, as, as a concrete fact versus that notion of abstraction that can be the most effective vehicle that can convey to make that reality more accessible. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, when you were talking before, you said that, and it's true, the world that we're living mm. is all about concrete. Mm. And then the confrontation with abstractions might, I don't know, uh, might be a sort of, uh, might be avoided or might... Um, we became impatient. Exactly. But I, thi I, th I think that... Um, uh, I really do care about this disappearance of the objects mm. because I, th I think that f so far we've been forever thinking in this correlative process. You don't know that this glass is a glass and the glass itself doesn't know that it's a glass. You know that it's a glass because of the relation y culturally you have with this object. Mm. It is a correlation. There's, there's a relation between you and mine as a knowledge process and this glass. But it is if, I, 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 if nobody has been in touch with this object forever, and if also it has never been something similar, cannot understand how to use it. But I think I have to say that what we have, um, we have to confront now, it's not only the sort of uh, uh, fear of abstractions or uh, omnipresence of concrete or, or, or data. I have to say that also as an artist, the last three decades, or probably the last 40, uh, four decades, have been so far the decades of, uh, in which we have abandoned the field of emotion. What is this field of emotion I'm talking about? If you talk about politics, during the 60s, at the end of the 60s and the, and, the, and, and, and the 70s, especially in Europe and especially in France, intellectuals were activists in the street. They were not in the university. They were Jean-Paul uh, Jean Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir mm -hmm. was against the Algerian war in the street. Mm -hmm. Jean Genet was against, uh, uh, was with the Black Panthers in the street. Angela Davis was in the street. I think with the 80s, with, with the 80s, Many of them have died. Michel Foucault died from AIDS. Some of them were old, etc. They have left a desert of behind them. There was not any generation of left people who have taken care of this field of emotion, that activism in actions, not representation. And the worst, I think, is the 90s, in which the conceptual art of the 70s and, and 80s became a sort of academism. Uh, you, that you could find until now in IKEA as furniture, and uh, and then it became a sort of attitude to don't be too formal, too much expressive, and I speak about what I know because I live this. When I was talking about colonization, about slavery, about minorities discrimination on gay, on lesbian, etc., I, I had this. Oh no, something more universal. This was the answer. So, what has happened then? At the end of the, of the 90s and beginning of the of 2000s, here, by the way, in Italy, it's interesting to talk about that because I think the f this field of emotion, what I, you know, since the antiquity, it's a parenthesis, we know with Aristotle that the mankind need the catharsis, mm -hmm. and that's why people go to theater. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they subconsciously, the, 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 the audience needs to see its own problems on stage, to evacuate them, to exorcise them. And this field of emotion, it's a need in a society. If you don't have an incarnation of this field, the society cannot work. So who have appropriated this field of emotion? The right wings. What has happened here in the 2000s with Berlusconi is this appropriation of the field of emotion. He has used the TV. You know that here in Italy, TV is extremely important. And then after him, Sarkozy and Marine Le Pen in French, but of course in the US, George Bush. How? 
just after the attack of 9-11, which was also another appropriation of the field of emotion by the radical Islamism. So if you read, for instance, the, the, the text by the Gilles Kepel, who is mentioning the mentor of uh, Ben Laden, whose name is Al-Zawahiri, ex they explain clearly that now, with the rise of technology and the abolition of spaces, we need to spectacularize the attack. It doesn't make sense to put bombs here. We have to do something significant to fear the Christian and to federate the Muslims. So this is the field of emotion that I'm talking about. And the artists and the, the actors of art have a strong responsibility in, this, the, in the fact that this has been abandoned. Because, as I told you, the field of emotion has always been a stake in politics of a society. When I'm mentioning here politics, I'm talking about a process that makes that within a society, people can live together. The, the, the etymology of politics is mutual relation between people. That's the politics. The so, in Greek. E exactly. So, that's why I wanted to answer to you about this abstract versus uh, 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 visual. I remember that I was very much bringing the, the form with my student, with, uh, in some, with director of museum, saying that, no, it's a mistake to say forms is over. We have to be uh, abstract, or we, not abstract, but we have no. to be less is more. Mm -hmm. Of course less is more, but we have to think also the world we are living in. We talk about contemporary art. To do, to do abstract art today, it's not the same meanings that in the 30s. In the 30s, it was a real statement, and we, knew, we know what has happened. I was mentioning this yeah. before. I think today one of the most important things and most important stake in art as a political, uh, 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 political in the sense that is gathering people, is I'm not talking about a party yes. or right or what, as a, as an, as a, as a, as a thought that gather, federate, it, we need to reappropriate the field of emotion. And this is what I try, um, I, I, I try to do here with my installation on couscous. Because in the end of the day, it's all about the voice. And these voices singing, making the, the, the grains vibrating, they touch everyone. You can, even if you don't like it, but you touch. And this is what I call the field of emotion. So, so I wanted to, put, to mark this because I think the reason we are all here today and this fantastic uh, uh, exhibition and project that is the Venice Biennale, is that we, 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 we hope and we, we think that it's important to think differently than the average of the society, and especially that those who have understood the stake of the field of emotion and have appropriated it. Of course. You know, yeah. Yeah, of course, I, I, think, th I think the left, uh, the, in, in the question of the, the field of emotion, is, is, is very important to understand, especially in the West, the way that the left also have abandoned this field as soon as they got the power. When, when, when a group of the society is not <coughs> anymore in the opposition, I don't know what to use as metaphor, but they, they become bourgeois at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I don't really know where to begin. Um, first of all, I think, thank you. Um, my mind's been uh, spiraling, I think, from the very first uh, sentence you said. Um, so many, um, so many, so many, so much, much? Food for thought. I think it's much. There, <laughs> I got it. Um, uh, so much. Um, I, I was going to say, I mean, okay, uh, everything is vibration. We have, uh, we have had some uh, wise people telling us that since uh, a while ago. And uh, I mean, to vibration, to actually reach something, we also need matter. So m maybe this is where, like, ma matter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, um, and our body is matter, you know? It's a uh, conglomerate of matter, so, yeah. It resonates through us. Um, how have you, I mean, listening to all of this and thinking, like, uh, how will you translate abstraction? Because sound sounds like an abstraction, but I'm, I mean, I am an, um, I consider myself a synesthete, and I'm wondering, have you worked with any synesthete at, at all, or someone who any could what? kind of, a synesthete? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. how you deal with it, because 
sound can sound like an abstraction until you see it. And I mean, we can see waves of sound through the technology that has, um, has made it available and um, to considerable lots of people. So how, 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 do, you, how do you see this, um, maybe this thin line between that intertwines like sound and matter and vision and um, visual oh. artwork? <laughs> I did. Uh, and, it's very interesting oh, question. All of this. Thanks. I, I, I knew uh, I, uh, about synesthesia for years, but one day I was. Um, it, I will answer you by an experience I got when I was giving a lecture in the south of France, in Marseille, where I have installed a, 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 an outdoor sculpture in a park, and it is about uh, 300 sticks on top of which I put symbols of battery, you know, of drums. So three and more than 300 symbols. And I was giving a, sorry? On top of no, spread in the wall, no, no, each one on a stick. Oh. So this installation work with rain, actually. When it's raining, you hear the installation. And uh, I remember very well, it was very, I was very tired. I had to give a lecture in an auditorium, which was not packed, but I had the impression it was, bien, it was well crowded, and it was completely dark. And the last question in this auditorium started like this. Um, I, I want to, uh, my name is Gérard, and uh, I'm uh, 58 years old, and uh, many people told me about your piece, I wanted to see it. Uh, so I was looking in the darkness <laughs> to who was talking to me. You know, when you're on the stage, you have this light on your face. I didn't see him. And the guy was explaining that he, he, he could not find the walk in the park, and he spent the whole time in the afternoon until they were about to close the park. And then he felt that it was, it was about to rain, because you know, when it's in summer, you feel the wind. And, and he said something incredible. He said, you know, I arrived in, 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 an, in, a, in a place, but I'm a, I'm a blind person. And it started to rain. And I can tell you that I saw your work. Mm. And I was, it was, uh, the whole auditorium was in silence. I was not, I had no idea where it was. Even the person who was with me was like, it was very emotional. Yeah. And you know what I mean? <laughs> it was so, it was so something. The, the guy said, I can tell you that I saw your work. And I think, I think this is, that's why I, I, I I, I, I do think it's not about terminology like abstract or concrete, but it's something we don't know. It is something we have to admit, we have to be able to withdraw from this chain of the reasons, of the way we've been, our mind is formatted, you know, with this uh, uh, obsession of controlling everything, even just by, by putting adjective words. I don't know, I think this was so something. Since then, I, I, I think about him that I also didn't met, because then, the, the, everything handed and it was, I had to go back and uh, I said hello to some people, but I did not meet him. And then he stay has a, as this story, this that I just told you, I think this is the field of emotion I'm talking about. I, it's one aspect of the field of emotion, of course. Can I ask yes. Can, can you use the microphone, please? Yes. Uh, so, uh, you were talking about reappropriation of the emotions, and you were also talking about the fact that in the 60s and in the 70s, people were just, you know, going on the street, and that they were fighting for what they believed. Don't you think that maybe uh, the fact that people are not going anymore on the street is just because they don't believe, uh, which doesn't mean it's a religion, which doesn't mean it's, it could be a political believe it could be a conceptual belief and uh, it's the fact that you believe and that you reappropriate yourself uh, with the field of emotion it's uh, from my point of view related much more to the fact uh, that we lost a lot of our relationship with our tradition we missed it may I, I agree completely I agree completely and I, when I was explaining, for instance, before uh, uh, how much uh, traditional rituals, for instance, uh, which have, n I mean, I, I, heard, I heard just recently about these Inuit rituals, you know, of healings with sound in the mouth of someone. I think 
we have lost this uh, continuity with tradition. That, that's why, you know, this we, we just out of 200 century, uh, uh, years of repetition of modern, 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 superiority, better, best, Promethean, technological. I, I, I think that uh, even when the, 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 the pharmacotechnology is using uh, knowledge of traditional societies in, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in the Amazonia, for instance, it's blinded. And I think, I think we have lost because because yeah, because because of a system of thought that has uh, um, that has been trapped by itself, you know. Yes, but we lost actually even not with the ancient tradition, but also in the recent tradition. Because you were talking also about poetry, about the the role and the meaning of sound. So when you were talking about that, it came to my mind. I don't know the poetry of Paul Celan. Mm -hmm. And even if, even though I don't speak German, um, when I hear the poetry of Paul Celan, it's just opening to me all the recent events uh, of the 20th century, mm -hmm. and they are powerful, and which we shouldn't forget. And also, you mentioned Anton and Arthur, uh, who actually he did his poetry mainly when he was in the in the madhouse uh, mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. the experience of yeah, the of Tara course. Homara yeah, yeah. place uh, and it's really interesting that he was actually drawing at the same time and uh, making poetry but at the same time bumping on the the rhythm of the of the of uh, 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 the rhythm with a hammer on a table to get the sound of the word on it, on it so, so i mean all all, all this <coughs> in, let's call them intellectual even though i don't like really that <laughs> word but they really had a still a strong relationship with the tradition of the past but also with their contemporary re, uh, tradition which this is something we lost, uh, and just in certain artists we managed to get them. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I cannot agree more. I think, I think the problem is this uh, difficulty we had to uh, shift between uh, the, 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 the now, this, so people talk about post-internet generation, and before. I think we are a generation of an incredible shift, and uh, in this shift, the transition has not been possible, so that's why we are. Yeah. I, th I think I. Th I mean, it depends where from from which perspective you think. But I think, I think, for instance, that what you, when you were mentioning, for instance, uh, Paul Celan or Artaud, there was. Uh, I would even take Artaud mm, as an example, and the hammer is very interesting because Artaud has psychological problem. Okay. But whether, where, but, but other problem really, we don't know. You know, I work a lot with in psychiatric hospitals as well. This is another part of my work. I did uh, uh, this work with Anzoxymoron, which is actually uh, gathering psychiatrists, psychoanalysts, uh, 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 traditional healers, uh, even rabbin, Muslim um, uh, imams, and 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 and, and priests. And, uh, it's an installation in which I have a, I have a, uh, interro interro interrogate them about madness, about psychosis, about schizophrenia, and uh, paranoia, and in the light of different uh, uh, topics that we are talking about here: modernity, colonization, genocide, etc. And what is interesting is that I have to say that probably the most incredible thing is that I have discovered that traditionally, in traditional societies. The shaman, or the uh, 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 the marabou, or the ima uh, uh, I'm not talking about religion, but traditional healer, were mad people. Yeah. Of course, they were mad people, and they were mad people saying that they have been, they have crossed the border, yeah. and then they have been back. So they have a gene inside themselves, yeah. which sometimes help them to heal other people. This happens so many times. So. When, when you, in France, for instance, we are not in Africa, I, I, I met uh, uh, in, in, in the countryside of Rouen, a man who is apparently someone who has been uh, 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 in psychiatric uh, hospital during 20 years, and now he's healing uh, people who, have, who are possessed. Yeah. But he's very much respected. I think, I think this is interesting. This is very interesting because it is completely the ante-modern 
and what Félix Guattari used to call the anti-psychiatrist. The fact that you, you uh, the reason is this um, sort of extra religion. And that's why we have lost the, 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 the I would say, the, the, of course you're right, and I, I agree with the, 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 the subtlety in when you say that we also have lost the contact with the contemporaneity. But what I was talking before, and I will tell you later why it's very important for me, is that we have lost this uh, uh, flexibility with the traditions because it's inside in our DNA subconsciously still here. Yeah. And we have lost it. And we, it's like we are living in the vitrine, yeah, but the I background of the shop is yeah. full of ghosts, you know? And, uh, but the people who come to the vitrine, they see that something <laughs> is wrong, you know? So what, 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 what is important for me to, 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 to take care and to work, especially in many of my work, uh, uh, questioning the tradition and sometimes using the material of the of traditional materials is the fact that I think this uh, loss is calling subconsciously from the individual to the group a repair. That's why I use a lot the notion of repairing in my work. I think I, I think the repair that the process the, uh, the repair is an agency. You can talk it. You can call it repair. Uh, transformation, improvement, re reappropriation. I'm sure you have words that I've never heard about, and I will find. I will say thank you. But I think there is an agency in the in the in nature that is this process of re, not only repairing but improving from one state to another one a situation. And this is the difficulty of uh, of uh, of to which we are confronted because the reason is. So far, this religion that is taking care of you <laughs> does not allow you to take care of yourself. And probably that's why Foucault had so much to problem with psychiatrists yeah. and, psycho and psychoanalysts yeah. especially. Because psychoanalysts, uh, they, are, I mean, they will not be happy if I talk like this. I have many friends psychoanalysts. <laughs> but I have to say that, that following Foucault, psychoanalysts are the priests. This is the word of Foucault, the priest of modernity. Um, th thank you also for, for, for the work at Arsenal. It's really touching, although it's not really touching. I'm trying to make sense. I get really emotional when uh, talking in public. But um, what, I, what I thought, uh, seeing the couscous I'm afraid you will fall again. and the voices, it's like uh, it dislocates um, and uh, it also creates a, an archive of sounds which is really ephemeral and when the, 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 the voice uh, is down we see the waveform through the couscous and also um, we hear the couscous dancing so there is another dislocation that, that is why I I am not sure about the disappearance of the concrete, but I'm quite sure of the dislocation of the concrete. When we think of the virtual worlds like Instagram, Facebook, and so on, which is also really ephemeral, but it actually has really high costs in terms of ecology, because all the information are stored like ev elsewhere in the, in the north, maybe. Uh, the material is extracted and is causing wars, and and also I think there there is kind of this this dislocation of the model. Yeah, yeah. The um, as we are like pretending not to see that uh, modern is a category that is out of the of a division from mm -hmm. modern and pre-modern. So we dislocated. As we are dislocating all the um, these costs, these ecolo uh, ecological costs elsewhere, we dislocated the, the modernity. Um, we appropriate of modernity and said everything else is pre-modern. So it's uh, really, I mean, it's so many inputs. Uh, the, the work. Um, uh, I would like to thank you about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Somebody. 
I was going to ask something, but you answered in between, but I would hope that you would answer further. When I look at your work, I see a form of resistance, and I see a repair. And I'm wondering, what exactly is it? Is it a resistance? Is it repair? If it is repair, you talk about modernity, and I'm thinking, is it a repair of the lost modernity, or something you're looking at in a future time? I'm not sure where all of that sits. So you say, is it repair or? Re resistance. A resistance, oh yeah. But the resistance is repair. <laughs> resistance is a process of repair. And uh, yeah, I mean, so much. When, uh, you know, when during the slavery time in the Caribbean islands, there were slaves who have left the plantation and they have uh, the named themselves brown, maru. And they created small republics and they were hunted by the, 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 the ruler of the plantation. This was resistance and repair. The, the notion, th what I like in your question is that you question, you, you put the fingers on the, uh, the, what is an artwork? I think an artwork is a repair. And if it's not a repair, it's a desire of repair. Why we do art? Of course we do, uh, we do art because we can't do nothing else. It, 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 it needs to exist. It's like, uh, but why, why we, we and in this sense, I'm talking about writing a, no, a, a book, a novel, any form of creations, music, uh, modest art as well, something that touched me a lot, very much. The fact that the, 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 the human being is like, is like pushed by this sort of agency to create things is a process of repair. Because before the things, there was nothing. And the paradox with you argument, which I think is also very interesting, is that even when, I when we are fragmenting, even when we are dislocating, we repair. We are all moved by this movement that, is, that makes a thing or a concept moving from one state to another one and improving a little bit or destroying a little bit. If you talk, if you observe nature, I you know, I always say that since a conference I gave in Saskatoon many years ago, I mean, some years ago with Eflux, I always say that uh, the mind time thinks that uh, the universe is a computer, but it's actually just mimicking the universe. I think, of course, art defines an incredible specificity in these things that is the mankind. Not all the animals create with the same agency and the same statement. Of course, there are animals who, who create uh, things that be absolutely beautiful. But with this uh, articulation of the thought, no. Until we will discover it. Because some animals have languages, like dolphins and, and great apes, etc. Then a subconscious, at least. But what is extremely important is to understand that in the end of the day, this process of, of creating out of nothing something is in the continuity of the order of things in nature. Nature is not repeating itself. Huh? In the theory of evolution of species, some fruit which did exist when the climate was uh, perfect for them did not, do not exist anymore in the same shape. If the climate became, I'm, I'm making caricature, huh, but yeah. it's, um, it, it's this. If the, when the climate became colder, pe uh, uh, prunes became peaches. They covered their skin with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, yeah, with hairs. No, th 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 this is a, I mean, peach is a, pe peaches is a variable, is a, come on, in variety, is a variety in a species. And the theory of Charles Darwin says that when in a species, one, um, I mean, uh, 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 because of many factors, the species cannot sustain itself, it collapses, but there is always one which will create a variety to adapt to the, chief, the shift of the environment. I think, the, I think we are like printed by this, the, by, by this, uh, by this uh, agency. So I like your question because I do care in, in anything, in any of my works, even works I used to do when I was not thinking about this, when I was not using the word repair, that an artwork is a repair, or at least a desire for repair. Uh, I'm not even talking about politics art, because politics art is like, uh, 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 
desire underlining uh, I mean, uh, injustice, etc. But uh, if we talk about abstract art, it's, uh, it's interesting to think uh, how when Kandinsky arrived in his studio, at the end, maybe he was a little bit drunk, but I, know, I don't know if you know the story. You have a canvas yeah. upside down, and he found, wow, this is not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then he became Kandinsky. <laughs> okay, this is a caricature. But it's important to, to, understand, to understand that, uh, that, that though I, I really do care about this sort of flex, flux and, uh, and smooth continuity between tradition and modernity, sometimes there are circumstances that create a, a, a very significant shift that is a repair. Can I ask you one question? Yeah. It's not the first time you came to the Biennale. And so it was <laughs> the first time it was in 2003, and the title of the Biennale was Dream and Conflict, uh, the Dictatorship of the Spectator. So yeah. quite different from uh, Viva Arte Viva. And mm, can you, I don't know, say something about the two different experiences uh, if you think that uh, it, it passes a lot of time. So maybe you changed a lot or your things yeah, change. Yeah. <laughs> I was young and beautiful, now I have gray hair, <laughs> I drink much more wine and uh, I speak a lot. Uh, so this is what has happened the last 15 years. No, frankly, I, I read a lot and uh, it was, uh, f for me it's a pleasure to be here again because, and I, I have to say 15 years after or 13, I don't know, it's perfect because I think uh, there, is, there is a part of the work that is these researches you do in the back of, uh, of, the, of the stage, you know, of the scene. And, and you need times, you really need times to uh, take the weight of, uh, of some ideas. You, you think about a project, you make a drawing, you leave it six months, six months after, no, it's not interesting, or it has been done, so you scratch it. And then I think, I think it needs time. But to answer your question in a m more, let's say, contemporary way, I think today, for more than ever, uh, the world we are living in is, uh, needs uh, much more actions than representations. I think we need to think and, 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 and understand that what we are doing is not, has not to stay in sort of a niche of art amateur, but also we, are, we, have to, we are part of a society. And I think when the, in 2003, the title was The Dictator of the Spectator, spectator yeah. Dream and, and Conflict. Well, we know today that they are not only spectator or yeah. dictator, you know? So I think uh, we have to not repair, but I'm going to use a synonym of repair that I care a lot, a lot is that I think we need to, we need to reinvent uh, art because in the last 13 years, the world has changed so much. I remember that when I was working on the project, we, we did not have smartphones, we did not have wi wireless, we did not have nothing. And it, I'm talking, I'm like talking about the First World War, you know? No, it was, it was 2003. Yeah. So even if you do painting or you sculpture, th the relation you have with data today has changed so much that um, the, que the question is just, it's my opinion now, but I am very delighted to share it with you here. The question is that in this era of click and scanning and liking on Facebook or YouTube, etc., the relation that we have with art is unfortunately too fast, yeah. probably too superficial, and, um, and makes that uh, we should wonder about that. For instance, I don't read critique anymore because I don't think that critique has, has can understand what is an exhibition where you have in the same room 200 artists who have been working, each one has hand on a project. So I think when you run like this in two hours with your smartphone doing this, I'm sorry, don't tell me that you haven't understood the show. As far as I'm concerned, I was here with my wife and son, and then I'm here today, and I will go back in uh, August, and I will go back in September. I'm, t I'm trying to take time to understand both the project of the curator and the works of some artists that I am sure they have not been visible because of this uh, yeah. mass. There are works that immediately you think that's super interesting, that's very good, that's uh, strong, that's uh, really, uh, um, uh, I mean, 
compiling, this is the word, no? But there are works which uh, are much more in the background, uh, also in pavilions that you have no time to see. So I think that what we should wonder today about what, me what, what means to be a visitor of an exhibition is, not, is that the scales of exhibition became too massive and we have to take care about that when we are visiting. We have to be not judgmental in the fact that, oh, this is too big, then it's bad, or uh, I like it, I like it, this is not good. You, you cannot decide this that way. You have to, at that point, we have to be traditional. We have to be, you know, we have to forget a cell phone when we are visiting an exhibition first. You have to take time, because I think that in this finale, you, you really need to take your time to watch to the film, to watch. Of course. The, uh, and, of course. and it's very difficult uh, in this area where, I it's true, m most of the artists said, uh, I saw during the opening just people, you know, taking selfie, like I'm here in front of an artwork, uh, posting on Instagram or, yeah. or else, and uh, that's it. That's your comprehension of the artwork itself, of the project itself, and it's a bit sad, but it. Uh, and but I think that it's very important that artists like you, um, does artworks that m force you, if you want to be forced, of course, to take your time. It is extremely important. It is exactly. I, c I cannot agree with more with you. I think that uh, the. One of the biggest uh, uh, trap of technology is that it's like it's like independence, you know, of co former colonized country. They got independent, but they became more dependent yeah. to neo neoliberalism. Absolutely. I think the problem with high technology is that we become the cell phone, yeah. and then the relation we have with the artwork is fast. It's clicking, scanning, you know, and. Uh, I, I really do care about this. Uh, I mean, uh, comparing with 2003, I had my, f my camera photo when yeah. I was here. So now we have a smartphone, smartphone that can make the picture. Yeah. I think the, the fact that there is a sort of translation of the self uh, within these technological um, uh, items, you know, makes that we have to be aware about that. We have to, we, we have to stay human and we have to even if we think that it's impossible to appreciate, of course it's impossible to have a look on all the, ob the artwork and the pavilion, etc. At least we have to be aware that what we look, we look it well. And if we don't like, we continue. But I think, I think the attitude of, of, as you said, taking time is extremely important to become independent from, from this. Uh, the dictator is not the, the dictator of the spectator, it's the yeah. dictator of this. Yeah. You know, it's this alienation. With the, 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 with the speed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You. So I, yes, thank you all of you, but we can stay here and uh, have uh, the biscuits and everything. And if you have some more questions, you are welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.